Hello everyone, welcome to the final round of the Swiss Rounds here at Grand Prix Malmö 2012. Rich Hagen and Nate Price in the booth. The transatlantic pairing back in harness. Welcome along, uh, Nate, God save the Queen and sundry others. And it is Frederick Person who makes the first play of the game. It is a Nightshade Peddler. He is on 36 points coming into this round. He knows that a win will take him to 39. No math in the world leaves him out of the top eight if he wins. Bongards, meanwhile, of the Netherlands, so Frank's going off to cheer him on in the final round. If he wins, he'll get to 37, and then it's all going to be very interesting when it comes to the tie breaks. So, um, I can tell you that as far as the tie breaks go, Jasper Grimmer and Nico Boni are, are heading the 36s at the moment, um, and uh, Frederick Person's right down the bottom of those, but he won't care with a win, he will be in. Bongards, meanwhile, are very poor uh, tie break. Uh, he's only on 60% tie break, so even with a win, he may be on the outside looking in. We'll see. He has Frank Carson in his corner, though, so <laughs> yes. that, that, hopefully that counts for something. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, that is the very first Festival of Endless Rest I've seen this weekend on camera. Pretty. Th oh, maybe not. Maybe it was one yesterday early. I think there was very one early. very early, you're right. It's a very good card. I mean, it accelerates your mana, gives you an opportunity to, uh, I mean, it produces one man of any color, right? <laughs> does a little does. bit of splashing. It's very good. I would like to pair my Death Touch with my plus two, plus two. It's just an interesting pairing, especially considering another card that I'm pretty sure I saw in person's hands. I think he's got a, uh, oh, oh, man, what is that card called? Uh, the Mad Prophet? I think, mm -hmm. in his hand. And uh, I mean, Death Touch combined with large creatures is one of those things that you don't really think to yourself is a wonderful combo. Like, mm -hmm. Death Touch on Grave Titan doesn't really do a whole lot. Six mm. sixes tend to kill the things they come across. Sure. But uh, again, at the same point, uh, missing out on a few points of burn mm -hmm. is effectively uh, what this is. And it's also the other way. It's not, it's not turning Druid's Familiar into 4-4 four, four Death Touch. It's turning the one one nightshade peddler exactly. into three three death touch. That's that's what's actually going on in this pairing. That the death touch for the for the druids familiar is basically incidental. Uh, this is true. Uh, although considering the size of most of the creatures in this format, uh, having a three three with death touch is similarly. Uh, it doesn't matter as much. Sure. Um, but at the same time, Hello. it matters a lot more when your opponent... Uh, Cigar a host of herons. Makes a 5-5 five, five hexproof flyer. A yeah. very good afternoon to you, Frederick Person. And we've got our reader, boys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, what does this one do? Cigarda is one of those cards that we saw at uh, Pro Tour Avicenna Restored. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the, like, I call it like a, the package of four cards that made up the possibility of decks that you could play uh, for the big Naya deck that was really the splash of the ah, tournament. Ah, sure. Uh, Sigarda, Gisela, oh my, is that a Thunderous Wrath? I think it is. Super. Oh, and he's thinking Beautifully hard. Uh, held up there by our tech crew. Uh, so you get to see it in action. It's just like being at the Pro Tour. Yeah. Miracles. Uh, and you know okay. we're not allowed to sing on it. I, I, st I stopped. I stopped. Good. <laughs> I think three notes they probably won't know. Yeah. So. Three mana now for Person after his per miracle. Person uh, aimed that miracle straight at Bond Guards. Mm. Said at uh, this point he is playing, uh, I guess, the burn deck. <laughs> yeah. This 3 3 and his 4 4. And this is one of those situations also where. I mean, if anything jumps in front of anything, you are definitely going to see uh, Sigarda take down the, the bigger threat of mm -hmm. the two, uh, if he decides to do that. So Person has a Thunderous Wrath as a straightforward reach out and touch you. Yes. Uh, but not a lot else by the looks of things. A um, couple of Nightshade Peddler represents finisher. Oh, now, of course, what does represent the end of the game is yeah. Revenge of the Hunted. That's the other miracle that says, yeah. uh, oh, look, that's gigantic and you've all got a block and I'll just kill you. Yes, I mean, it, more often than not spells a tremendous amount of death for people. We did see a situation earlier where uh, a Revenge of the Fallen was not quite enough to seal the deal against uh, an opponent and the player came back and ended up actually losing the game after having cast Revenge of the Fallen. So 
uh, Von Gardz goes ahead and sacrifices his Sigarda to take out the Druid's Familiar, which frees him up from having to deal with any large death-striking creatures in the near future. But the power of Soulbond really shines through here in the fact that all a person has to do at this point is play any other creature, and he can pair it up with the Soulbond creature that was left behind. Uh, his deck has a lot of smaller creatures. Uh, he has a lot of haste. Three copies of Mad <coughs> Prophet. You know, we said how Sigarda was kind of constructed-ish. Wow. Silverblade Paladin, that's a pretty good constructed card, too. Yeah, we were also just talking about the power of Soulbond. Yeah. It was one of the biggest, splashiest Soulbond creatures in the set. Oh, and that is an Inquisitor. It's, oh, wow. I, I don't want to throw you a curveball here, but I was trying to remember where Double Strike first appeared in Magic. Because it's such an awesome ability. Um, and I could not recall from the life of Scourge? me. Scourge? Right, okay. Pulled that out of the old hat. <laughs> Did Rashad not want that one? Ah, uh, yeah. He doesn't know that I've got it. Uh, we fine. should keep this uh, on the down low. Between ourselves. Uh, a person does have a couple of other cards to go finish things off. Uh, burn at the Stake hit players as well. That was a nice Certainly large does. rare. Yeah. Certainly does. So he's got Burn at the Stake. He also has uh, a Pillar of Flame and a Thunderbolt. So there's he does have multiple cards that could help him finish the last bit of reach, but mm. it's going to be really difficult for him to come across anything considering his life total is going to be taking amazing <laughs> An amazing dips. mauling. Yeah. Silverblade Paladin is one of those cards I have I've never actually seen it cast and played in limited. Uh, which is that? The the Paladin. Ah, oh, just just awesome. Yeah, I mean I Crazy completely thing. believe it is. Now uh, you see Bonguard's uh, contemplating his options before his attack, having to deal with those death strike or death touch creatures. I mean, it's kind of less important when your creatures have first strike in addition to regular strike. Every creature that he has, has, or at least has the ability to strike first, I'll say. Which effectively mm -hmm. moots the Death Punch guy. Yeah, that, so Bongards is at 9. Mm -hmm. I don't think the, the um, Burn at the Stake plan really gets Person anywhere, because he needs a third creature well, in play, and a fifth land. So... And now here is Seraph of Dawn. Yeah, the fifth land is the more important part because don't forget, like Burn at the Stake still deals damage to creatures. Like he could oh, sure. simply use it to get rid of the Silver Blade Paladin, which puts him back in a better position. But he's still facing down. I mean, at this point, yeah, two first strikers, a flyer with Life Link. Things are looking fairly grim at this point. Yeah. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that Bongards wishes he had a way to get rid of the creature that's paired up with that paladin. That way he could have given his angel a uh, double strike. Ah. That's actually something that's fairly overlooked a lot of times in uh, this limited format, is the fact that you can just, like, I don't call it suiciding creatures in, but you can definitely try to shave off some, uh, like, ways to, like, trade your creatures in combat uh -huh. that are soul bonded with the intention of replacing them with the creature you really want to have soul bonded to. For yeah. sure. So this is probably our first genuine white weenie deck, one might say, um, as, as it were. So that's certainly the look of the board uh, right now. We see plenty of red-white aggro. Yeah, I definitely agree. As the Silver Blade Paladin will be invited not to block. Because uh, Bonguards is playing three whole car... Well, not counting Sigarda and not counting his Vessel of Endless Rest. He's only playing three non-white cards in his deck. Sure. So it is just an absolute mono white. I mean, Sigarda's white. Yeah, exactly. Which is just, yeah, actually a little Good bit point. of color bleed. Yeah. And so what, what have we got from, from elsewhere then? Well, uh, he's got one blue card. He's playing Infinite Reflection, which uh, uh, okay. is quite a beating, especially if you manage to put it on, oh, say, your Paladin. He also has another wonderful Soulbond creature that would love to see Infinite Reflections, uh, Wolfier's Silverheart. <laughs> uh, now, that, that rings a bell. 
is that the plus four plus four Solborn guy that dominated Brutto Barcelona to I, an extent? I think it is. Ah, yeah. He managed to get an infinite reflection on Silver Wolf or oh, Wolf your Silverheart. I, I like that we were, we were actually speaking about like the absolute best possible situation, like giddy little kids. Like this is this be so awesome. Can you imagine all the all the twelve twelves he could have? Think of the fun. <laughs> Think of the fun you could have watching your opponent scoop up their permanence. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because he's actually got a bunch of other cards that are just good for the fact that every creature you play afterwards becomes that creature. Like a Timberland guide, overlooked, but you know, you get on a Timberland guide and every guy that you play gets you another land out of your deck. Uh, so, we've got an all-in from Jason Bongards, or Jesper Bongards, I'm sorry. Uh, looks like we have at least a double striker and... First an strike angel. that. Person says, sure, I'm going to activate. I'm going to discard Geist Trappers to try and draw something else. Let's see what he drew. I'll tell you what it wasn't. It wasn't a miracle. That is the case. I thought this so person's been pretty comprehensively wiped out here. Yeah. Down to two, and one guard is up to eight, if I do my math. Or ten, I mean, if I do my math right. And that is a mountain, and is most likely going to be a concession. Yeah. As well, I says, don't forget that isn't paired with anything. Yeah. <laughs> Two against ten. Handful of red spells. Draws a mountain. But, uh, don't see a way back, and neither does person. Yeah. That is 1-0 to Jasper Bongards of the Netherlands. Again, remember, he wins... He's into a lottery. Yes. Well, it's a, fi it's a fixed lottery in the sense of it is dependent <laughs> on actual facts rather than luck. Um, so if you're new to us again, welcome. Um, at the end of the Swiss rounds, at the end of 15 rounds, you'll see players on the same record. They are ranked by what we call OMW, Opponent Match Win. So all the people Jasper Bongards has played will have a record this weekend, right the way back to rounds one, two, three or four, whenever he started playing. Uh, and all their records combined will give a percentage to give a sort of strength of schedule, if you will, um, to, to borrow a phrase from uh, assorted <laughs> North American sports. Um, of course, my European audience has no idea what that's about. Because uh, uh, we don't have that. We just have everyone plays everyone twice yes. kind of thing. Um, and uh, congratulations to Chelsea, who uh, won the Champions League yesterday. For those of you who don't know, that's soccer people in uh, America. It's quite important to people in Europe. No comments, either at the America Dig or the Chelsea Victory. <laughs> oh, that's... Wait, you're, you're the American who knows about soccer, aren't you? I am I'm I'm one of the few. <laughs> ah. It's growing, though. Yes, it certainly is. So, Bongard's one up. He will get to 37 and then have to look at his opponent match win percentage. Person will not have that problem uh, if he can come back uh, and win. And that looks a tall order, given what we've seen from Jasper so far. But if he can come back and win, 39 points is absolutely stone cold locked uh, for the top eight. Jasper's deck has got a large amount of power, and it actually has a lot of cards that are fairly reasonable against Person's deck. Uh, he's got two angelic walls, which are a little bit out of place in his deck that is attempting to win through mostly ground creatures. But uh, his ground creatures are those that generally make combat not fun for opponents. Creatures with first strike, creatures with double strike, creatures with uh, like Swamp Walk, he's got a Firebox Explorer in there, less, less important in this matchup. But This is actually a classic matchup where Bongards wins quickly. Mm -hmm. If Pearson can stabilize, Pearson gets to clog up the board, he gets a third, a fourth, a fifth creature into play, there's half a dozen creatures eventually on either side. Yep. Even if Bongards then comes up with a Sigarda, what happens is, person goes, well, do you know, I've drawn my burn at the stake, I've got five guys, let's call five threes of 15, kill you. Yeah. So long game, Pearson wins. This is absolutely about survival for Frederick Pearson. He doesn't need to do anything except be there when the game goes long. Which is ironic because his deck is, as I said earlier, filled with a lot of haste creatures. Like that triple mad mm. prophet, he's got two fervent Cathars. Uh, he, he's got a lot of things that are supposed to end the game early. Uh, one thing I found interesting, he's got a Tybalt the Fiendblooded in his sideboard. Oh, drafted, wow. But not played, and I'm actually curious about that. I, I mean, it's not incredibly amazing in Limited, but the same, like, 
it, it's a two drop planeswalker and if it sticks around his ultimate just yeah. it, it is one of those win games I, I, I mean this is a matchup where it's less likely to stick around very true even though he's on the play the likelihood is there's a turn two at the very least from bongos yes um it also, I don't think, fits in with his deck very well because his deck is an aggressive deck. Uh, sure. It has the big finisher in uh, the burn at the stake, but his deck is fairly aggressive and that leaves very few things to protect his Tybalt should it land. And he'd actually rather be spending his early turns of the game building up as well. I'll be interested to see whether, whether a person takes the move of saying, I will try and survive, or whether, given that, as you say, what his deck notionally wants to be doing mm -hmm. is getting busy whether he will attempt to race um, and look at burn at the stake as something that you know, basically just a removal spell that perhaps he gets there to do three damage to something um, it'd be very interested to see how he plays this i think bond guards is pretty straightforward it's an aggressive white deck it will be aggressive it'll be white yes. and then he'll win or he won't um, now, it's not to decry the skill involved in piloting it, um, as we see six cards for Bongards um, but, uh, on both sides, but what will Person do? He's got, is that two or three mana? Um, He's going to keep with... I saw at least with, two. Yeah, I'm not sure I saw a third. One thing I can guarantee you he is going, that is going to be different between this game and the last game is if he gets an opportunity to Miracle his Thunderous Wrath early this game, he will not be taking that. that yeah. is a, he has very few ways to actually completely get rid of and kill the Paladin, mm -hmm. and he needs to, even, even at six mana, be able to kill that card should it hit the table. So we start with Nightshade Peddler, and that is then followed with Timberland Guide for Bongards. Now remember, they both mulligan to six, but Bongards does have a third mana, which Person did not. Right. As we, as we sort of suspected, he was sitting there with just two. The Timberland Guide attacks for two. Aggressive decks punish mana issues. Farbog Explorer is not the worst thing for Person to see there. Not at all. <laughs> Could have been Silver Blade Paladin after all. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, if he hasn't drawn a land here, I think he's in big trouble. He has drawn a land. Yes. There's the forest. You see it on the right of his hand. Comes down. Now, does he have a use for three? Looks like he does. There we are. Pair those up. And he does also, you'll notice, he's got a drop for four in uh, the Mad Prophet. Mm -hmm. And should he make it to five, he has a Wildwood Geist in his hand as well. That would require running lands off the top of his deck. Sure. But they, these are the things he's playing for, or at least hope for. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bone Guards has a fourth land in his hand, and does he have a Seraph in his hand? We'll I guess we'll find see. out soon. In comes the team. As usual in tempo matches like this, you've got Bone Guards with all his mana untapped, yeah. Pearson on the defense with the possibility of no tricks at all. I can't imagine. So it's, you know, do you, do you get in the way? Well, yes, because I've got Death Touch and. You know, what do you want to do? Do you want a zealous persecution? Do you have something like that um, to first strike and get it out of the way? I find that a very interesting block, actually, because you don't hmm. want to keep him around and be able to continually, continually stick whatever new creature you play yeah. in, in play to replace the one that you traded off with Death Touch previously. Uh -huh. But now he's gotten rid of his ability to do that. Uh, I, I don't know if he was planning on taking the aggressive route with... Uh, Another card, or like, what's he so the off? righteous blow takes out the nightshade peddler. Angelic wall comes down, and in some senses, that redefines what person can and can't do in this game. Yes, um, and kind of takes away from him the ability to try and get involved into a race, uh, as those two will pair up once again. Well, the stone right there does significantly help his ability to get through. Should he draw a second mountain at this point, uh, his loyal Cathar, uh, his Cathar can make it through that wall there. He's certainly hurting for a land. And so Bongard's has drawn his cards as well. I mean, he's on he's on four mana, which allows him to cast most, if not all, of the cards in well, most of the cards in the deck, I'll say. And he's got two white mana and two green mana, so he's not even locked out of uh, any of the four mana cards that in his deck that he could play. And this isn't like I find it very interesting with the angelic wall uh, in Bongard's deck. This is definitely a deck that 
you tend to not like it, it's like the angelic wall usually associate with the deck so you have a long-term plan of like playing something massive like we saw from uh, Nico mm -hmm. Boni earlier or you find them in decks that are like blue white that have a lot of evasion creatures and you use the angelic walls to hold them down uh, they're not as good when you've got the attacking creatures sure like the far bog explorer attacking here but against a person's deck where the creatures are smaller and tend to be weaker and more fragile it's actually not as bad because if you draw the side of your deck that has the angelic walls in them, fantastic. And if not, you get to trade off for you know, creatures that are generally going to be. And now he's another angelic wall. Okay. Interesting. There's a thunderbolt. Kills one of the walls. So we see that geist there. What it does do as well, though uh, Bongards can't know this, is that Revenge of the Hunted becomes rather less exciting in as much as he can put an awful lot of toughness in the way. Yeah. Um, so he's he's not going to die anytime soon with with that much. Um, a Revenge of the Hunted is million miles away from lethal at the moment. Yeah. And now here's Gold Knight Commander. Bungards doesn't look like he's got any of the really cool tricks to go along with that. Uh, I guess Voice of the Province is about as close as it gets, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess there aren't really any unless you're playing red. It's a mad prophet. He's mad. Mad, I tell you. <laughs> Step three, prophet? So, Gold Knight Commander comes in, block. I like this very, very much from person. And then, there's the discard, there's the draw. Keep wow, the Wow, that's an, I mean, isn't Gold Knight Commander quite good? Yes. He seemed to trade something really good for something really kind of not. I don't think he intended necessarily for it to be a trade. I, I, I thought... He, he probably was intending to attack and have his opponent re like respect the fact that he had as much open man as he did, and wow. he was white and green. There is Voice of the Provinces, oh. with bonus human. Little buddy, I like to call him. Is, is that? I, yeah. I remember that, I like that. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Yeah. It's the Voice of the Provinces, right little buddy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, and they see person considering his options. Uh, attacking with a 5-5 five, five on his turn, something that uh, Bond Guards is not going to be able to really have too much of a say about. He could definitely have tossed, you know, chump blocked or tossed a couple creatures in front of him, but there's no reason to do that. That thunder, that's actually puts things in a very interesting spot, because Bond Guards, is the, this is, after this draw, only his second card in his hand. So he's now facing down against a person who's starting to steadily gain his mana has the advantage in the, the sometimes 5-5 five, five creature. Sigurada. Oh look, there's an always 5-5 five, five creature. Bless you. <laughs> oh, yoink, because that's where he want Revenge of the Hunted. Yeah, that's really good here actually. <laughs> Six mana, there it is! It wasn't on top of his deck, it was just there at his deck. Would any of you care to block? Oh, all of you would care to block me. Yeah, actually all of you. Why, thank you. <laughs> oh. And just like that, I mean, person had the advantage. Bongard's effectively nullified it with that uh, Sigarda, and then it's right back in his favor again, having easily the largest creature on the board and many creatures in hand. And, wow. And then, hey, look, you no longer have the largest creature on the board again. Yeah, <laughs> we're tied. Except for much as... The rest of the cards in his deck too. Uh, Archangel has vigilance, so, and but Jasper is sitting there with no cards in hand. Yes, he is literally empty-handed. Oh my! As person has three cards to work with still. There's a nightshade peddler in his hand at least. The others are obscured by his. Of course, for all his thunderbolts, <laughs> Archangel. Bit bigger than that. Yes, very much so. You tend to think of Thunderbolt saying three to the face or destroy target flyer. Yeah. What it does. <laughs> Certainly not now. Now that looked like no pair. Yes. And that looks like a pair. 
That is definitely a pair. And the question becomes, choose the Archangel and attack him. Uh, no. And then I don't think you send your Geist in here. I guess if he's only got one card in his hand, he's forcing the trade. I, I don't know, I still don't like that necessarily. Like, now that you've got the fair up, although I guess it makes it so that he can't attack with his 2-1 on the next turn because he'll just leave his uh, human back to block, so... At this point, he forces Bumgards to make the decision about his trade, so... That's fine, that's fine. Dropped him down to 8. Without the draws. This is his lone card in hand, correct? It is. And Person's down to his last card as well, so... The downside is it looks... I mean, there's a slight advantage for uh, Vanguards as far as impact cards remaining go. Uh, Person also does just have the I win card of uh, Burn at the Stake. Mm -hmm. So Vanguards looking to see whether he can avoid a, a nerve shredding game three. Yes. Of course, there are other tables that are very, very dependent on what happens here. Bongards wins, other players come into the 37 point mix. Person wins, that's another getting clear of the 37s, going up to 39. See in the background, looks like John, uh, John Westberg um, had a victory. Yeah, John Westberg defeated Ashraf Abu Omar. So that puts Westberg to 39. They decided that they needed to play on 36 each. So that's one gone to 39. Things actually don't look too good for person right now. Yeah. Uh, Bungard's got in for five, and I think he'll continue to get in for five. That Inquisitor and his ability to get first strike negates the death touch, much as it did the last time yep. uh, against that 2-1 in Cathar. But in person does always have the ability to, should he need to, suicide that in there and replace it with a larger creature, which he can then pair up question is if he's going to get an opportunity to and if he has that larger creature. Here's the angelic wall playing save my life total. So now, angels two, not a defensive card last time I checked. No. Unless you have wolf avenger. Another flyer comes down for Bungard. Person down to four. He's on his final turn. Uh, person does have Geist Trappers, which would be really wonderful right here. He's that... drawn a red spell. Is that what I... Oh, it doesn't matter because he doesn't have triple red. Yeah, and, and even thunder, uh, Thunderous Wrath would have been fine. Um, yes, it would. Because only single red for the miracle cost. Uh, person is finding I himself... I think Person is done. He's going to attack with everything. Let's see what shakes out, boys. And Jasper has to be careful because we've seen some of those theatrical shrugs down the years. Yes. <laughs> so, oh no, I'm only about to kill you. But I uh, don't think that's what's happening here. No, I think at this point he just simply plays it safe, does exactly what it needs to to keep his uh, Archangel alive, and he'll probably... Oh, interesting. He chooses to use his Moonlight Geist to fog the uh, Wild Geist, which ironically is something we just discussed earlier when we were <laughs> talking about the differences between the two Geists in Ab Limited. Absolutely. So. And now we see what I would imagine being a 2-0 victory for Bungards on this attack. Looking at two cards doing the... Uh... Terrifying oh. Presence. Yep. That's going to so. keep him alive for one more turn. Wonder if that makes a person wish he had attacked with his uh, searchlight or his moonlight geist. Because if that's the case and person does rip the thunderous uh, wrath here and kills that archangel, he would have still had him lethal on the following turn. Mm. Bongard's passes. 
person, what's on the top of your deck? It's a spell. Green card? It's not a miracle. Yeah. Shakes the hand, and Jasper Bongards wins round 15, and that puts him to 37 points. Frederick Person is going to miss out. Almost certainly he's going to be on 36 points. And it looks like there are plenty of people who are going to get all the way to 37. Wow, and Bongars looks pretty happy about that one. As well he might. I mean, at virtually every phase of both games, he